Okay, come back to me. Come back to me. Come back to me. We'll talk about that later. From uh, part segment BC represents the division between what two states of matter. All right, so B is C is from here to here. This is solid liquid gas. Between solid and liquid, we call that something very specific. Um, what is the transition? What is that phase change called? Oh. Melting. It's called melting or backwards, it would be freezing, right? Yes. The way we explain the fact that you got some solid and some liquid, it's called physical equilibrium between solid and liquid. That's the way you say it. That's the, that's the appropriate way to say it. So that just means that you're going back and forth. This double-headed arrow means you're going back and forth between solid and liquid. Physical equilibrium between solid and liquid, AKA freezing and melting. Melt, freeze. All right, number two, what does the segment AB represent? AB from here to here. So the solid, the solid to gas line, which is saying in those words, Physical equilibrium between solid and gas, aka sublimation and deposition. Good job. D to D. So liquid to gas. So physical equilibrium between uh, liquid and gas. I'm sorry, slow. And that's evaporation and condensation. Perfect. So those are the phase changes when you're on that line. And this uh, can also, you can read the graph, you can say at X pressure, you can read the, lot, the graph over and tell me where it's melting at that pressure or where it's boiling at that pressure. So this phase diagram is specific to one substance and one substance only. The one we have here is specific to water. How do I know this? Water has a special way that its lines look. It is pretty much the only substance on the planet that has a negative slope between solid and liquid. So I'll be right, get your question in a second. It's pretty much the only one that has this negative slope right here. Okay, everything else would look like this. Have a positive slope. So to write that down, it's got a negative slope between solid and liquid. Hmm? Um, I don't know. Is this number four? Um, it's not. It's not up here right now. I'm just telling you that water has a negative slope between solid and liquid. And that's special because what's so cool about water and it's between its solid and liquid phase? Huh? Well, most of the time if I have like solid lead versus liquid lead, solid lead would sink to the bottom of its container if I put it in liquid. Oh, water, water is less dense. Okay, it floats. So that means that the solid state is less dense than the liquid state. So this is density. So that makes it have special properties, and those special properties allow us to have liquid water on the planet for normal life. It allows us to talk about capillary action, allows us to talk about surface tension. It's all based on its hydrogen bonding ability. So I'll talk about that in just a second when I go to the next slide. So let's go through and answer the rest of these. Three, no sorry, four. What is the pressure at normal boiling point? Why is this pressure significant? Normal boiling point, normal meant what again? No, normal didn't mean 100 degrees. Normal meant normal pressure. So normal pressure for us is one atmosphere, and that is the normal boiling point. The normal boiling blah, 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 blah. normal boiling point means you read this graph at one atmosphere, and how, that says one at 1.3. How is that one atmosphere? Right. One atmosphere equals 101.3 kilopascals. So I can give you any unit pretty much there. So you read it here, it's hard to see, but there's our dot where the line, it crosses the melting line. Oh, no, sorry, that's melting. Boiling point lines are right here. Drop it down low, you see the 100. So this is 100 degrees C is the boiling point at normal pressure. Why is that significant? The reason that we have to know this is because This is the pressure, the, sorry, the vapor pressure at this point is equal to the pressure of the atmosphere. So remember yesterday I was telling you that vapors just, they come off the surface. Boiling helps that because it's starting at the bottom and pushing all the gases up out of the surface. Once the pressure on top, so if you're going to be, okay, so can you stand up for me? So here's the pressure of the atmosphere. 
<laughs> He's the brush of the atmosphere, and I'm the vapors. And if I can't push, <laughs> so if I can't push past the brush of the atmosphere, I won't boil. I can't vaporize. So if I equal this, then it will be in equilibrium. This one's pushing down, I'll be pushing up. We'll just keep boiling. But if my boiling, if my pressure gets even higher, then I can totally push past the pressure of the atmosphere. But so they have to be at least equal for boiling to occur. So that's why I say vapor pressure equals the pressure of the ATM or atmosphere. That's one of the significances of it. What happens to the melting point of the substance as pressure increases? So the melting point is the divide between the solid and liquid, right? As I increase this pressure, so if I'm going from here to here, what happens to the melting point? The melting point gets lower, so it's melting at a lower temperature, right? So here it melts at whatever that is. 0.01 uh, degree C. Here it melts at a negative number. So it's melting at a lower temperature. The reason why is why well, I'm point the temperature lowers because as I increase pressure, what am I doing to my molecules? I'm increasing pressure. Oh, increasing pressure. I'm what? I'm compacting them. I'm making them scooch closer together. <clears throat> for us, for water, water normally it looks like this. Water, I'm sorry, it's solid water. Solid water, aka ice. There's a water molecule there, 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 and there. What's in the middle? Nothing. Nothing. Okay, so the amount of space it takes up and the mass is low. It's a low density. That's why it floats on liquid water. So if I can take this solid and compress it, I disrupt that crystalline kind of like hexagonal structure. I can press it, I make them get together under that high pressure. Once they're together, they don't take on a nice solid structural appearance. They just kind of start to flow. Flowing means you are a what? A liquid, okay? So it's pretty, at those high pressures, they compress it so much it's easy to make it go right to liquid phase because they're already close together. They're already almost flowing together. So they compress it, get together, flow easily like a liquid. That's a complex explanation, but we'll work on the whole water versus everything else debate here. What happens to the boiling point as the pressure increases? Boiling point as pressure increases? That one makes sense, right? So this one's also related to the pressure. So increasing pressure causes an increase in boiling point temperature. What are you doing to the liquid when, you, when you're increasing pressure? Again, what do you, what do you doing? Anytime you increase pressure, you're doing the same thing to molecules. Compressing them. So if I'm pushing my liquid all the way together, and I want it to boil it, I'm going to put a lot of energy into it, right? Because they're super close together right now. To, to make them vaporize, they have to, like, here, you're going to go over here, you're going to go over here, you're going to go over here, into the gaseous phase. So if they're really close together, I have to increase the amount of energy I add to this to make it boil. Therefore, increased pressure causes me to increase the temperature because I need to t uh, increase that temperature in order to allow them to separate. Cool? Okay, I'm not writing all that down. All right, so that's it for your phase diagrams from yesterday. These are the two different ones. So this is negative slope. So who is it? Water. This is a positive slope. This happens to be carbon dioxide. Notice that I can buy dry ice at our normal atmospheric temperature. That's one atmosphere. And at normal atmospheric temperature, I mean pressure, my solid goes directly to gas, also known as sublimation. So that's why we, when we have our dry ice, I can have it sitting on the counter. It doesn't melt. It just goes right to the gas. You've seen that, right? Right. We've got it in here. Okay, cool. And then, oh, I can't remember what this is. Oh, heating curve, because that's the last thing I have to do here for heating curves. All right, so here's what a heating curve looks like. And you guys have a sample of this, or a, a diagram of this on your paper. Heating curve, is it a curve? No, it's a big fat line. It is a staircase. And I like to say phase diagrams and heat curves. Phase diagram is a diagram. A heat curve is not a curve. It's a staircase. So what happens here is I'm showing you how the phases change as you add temperature. But it's not after, it's not with pressure. It's only with like kind of like time. So you're looking at temperature and heat added. Temperature and heat are not the same thing at all. Temperature is the average kinetic energy of everything. Heat is a sum of all the energies. 
So it's kind of, I like to say it's temperature versus time or time that you've added heat. So in this case, you have your solid is your first little uh, slant. Liquid is the second slant and gas is the next slant. What has to happen between? So the phase changes, changing between states is phase changes. So that this has to be melting and this plateau has to be evaporation. Okay, if you need to sketch that or write that someplace, write it down. But I wanted you to see the pictures because you can see solids are nice and compact together. The melting phase has both of them present. That's the equilibrium. The liquid phase, they're flowing a little bit. The evaporation phase, they're in equilibrium. Both of them are present. And then the final stage, you can see the gases are only present. Okay, remember what H fuzz meant? Fusion, which means melting, and then HVAP, vaporization. Okay? I see a couple people writing a couple of things. And then, I've got like one more question for you. I like this picture. All right, what do you, since I'm on here, what do you notice about the temperature during phase change? So the, the, the try on that. temperature remains constant, yes, during phase change. That is one of the most important points that people don't get. Ram, okay. So the segment, which segment of the graph represents the phase changes on this graph? Which ones are they? So the line AB and line CD or segment CD, like my sublet so algebra. This is geometry. Okay. Um, what's happening to the temperature while the substance is changing phases? So here you're saying the temperature is constant. Well, what did we say about melting? We said it was endothermic or exothermic. We said it was endothermic. So we had to put energy into it to make it melt. Well, I'm, I'm putting energy into this, right? Because this is heat added per time. Energy does not have to be temperature. It's this big, 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 we use temperature, heat, and, and, and temperature, heat, and energy sometimes all interchangeably, but it's not true. So I'm putting heat into this. But the heat is not going to be transferred to kinetic energy. So let's go ahead and write this part down. Temperature equals average kinetic energy. Heat equals potential energy plus kinetic energy. What's potential energy? Energy what? Energy that has kind of like within it, it's got the, it's got the potential to do something, but it, kinetic energy is the energy of motion. It's actually moving around. That energy is its motion energy. Potential energy, we also call chemical energy. Remember in chemistry, we call it chemical energy. It's the energy within bonds or IMFs. Because those are, those are really the only types of energy we can talk about. Physics, you got like gravitational energy and like height, you know, potential energy. I have the potential. This has a lot of potential because it's got the potential to drop from here to here. But once I drop it, that's energy of motion, which is kinetic energy. So I transferred weight. Sorry. Sorry. Here it has the potential. And when I actually let it go, it has kinetic. So you can transfer things from potential energy to kinetic, and you can go back and forth and back and forth. Chemicals can do the same thing. <laughs> I would not drop that on purpose. <laughs> so, in this phase change here between A and B and C and D, what's happening is I'm adding heat, but I'm adding heat to the point where I can have molecule A and molecule B close to each other, and then I can have them separate a little bit. So what I'm doing is all I'm doing is I'm changing the potential energy to kinetic energy or vice versa. I'm changing the way the energy looks. I'm not changing its actual temperature. So I'm changing the way the energy looks, not its actual temperature. So if phase changes, you need to know the temperature does not change. And that's it for your heat curves. Oh, guess what a cool curve looks like? All right, so draw, draw it for me. In the air. Like you just don't care. Okay. Down. What's that one going to be? Okay, but it's, it's the highest energy, right? So that's our gas. This is our phase change. So called what? Called what? Condensation. Next one. Liquid. 
uh, what's this one called? Freezing, and then down, solid. So that's a cool curve. All right. What if I was carbon dioxide? How many, how many of uh, these things would I have? Yeah, two. Two. I would go straight for carbon dioxide at our normal pressure. We go from solid. I'm sorry. Sorry. We're gonna go this way. Carbon dioxide. Why does it just keep getting smaller? I feel like I'm technologically challenged here. Okay. Here we go from solid. What would this be called? Sublimation to gas. So sometimes it'll tell you specifically you're subliming something and you don't go through liquid, so don't even draw the liquid. You just go straight to what you said you're going to. All right. Next is this thing. Okay. Um, oh, I was going to show you the States of Matter song. Oh, I love this song. Maybe. I have to censor Great Plasma. Okay, you ready? This is like 90s music for us. It starts with solids. I don't know why. Can't change it no matter how we try. Can't let it change the ball from the slot. Particles in position. Liquid and fluid within. Particles fly by. There's a pendulum swing. Watch the minute glass. Always taking a change. My hips stays the same. Yes, yes. Not me. Okay, you guys know what plasma is now? No. Plasma is, you, who's ever seen the Aurora Borealis? Central Alaska. Okay. Who's seen it online? Okay, so our pictures. Aurora Borealis is gas particles that are so energized that they uh, are themselves, you know how when you cause your electrons to jump and then fall back down, they emit light? Yeah. That is what they're doing all by themselves because they're so energized. So it shows us really pretty colors. Lightning does the same thing. And we've all been dispensers. Catch the ball. Yes. Your hand? Yes. I was once a high schooler. Okay, don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> Bad releases. Okay. So that's essentially what plasma is. It is a fourth state of matter that we commonly don't speak of, but it is present. Okay. And gases, ooh ah. Okay. So football players, Appalachian, they have to adjust their bodies. Uh, be quiet, I'm talking, thank you. So this is, this is when the uh, players have to adjust their bodies for their different conditions that they play games at. If you ever play at a high elevation, you're not able to play at a low elevation very well because the pressure is heavy. It feels like somebody's pushing their chest. But if you're up there, there's less oxygen. So it's, it's kind of hard to adjust unless you have conditioned yourself appropriately. Like uh, when my high school football team went to, 
oh gosh, where was it? Up in the mountains. They went to the playoffs. They sucked because they had never played in the mountains before, so they just got out of breath so quickly. So that was hard for them. Underwater, higher, lower pressure. Higher pressure than us, right? Uh, Mile High Stadium in Denver, lower pressure. Okay, so the NFL players have to actually adjust themselves as well. Uh, who's going, going up a mountain or going to play with the pop ears? Pop ears? Like that? I do it all the time. It's because that at different pressures, so if you go up in the mountains or up in a plane, you pop your ears because which is higher? The pressure pushing on your ear or the pressure putting out, pushing out of your head to, your, to the outside? When you're up in a plane, the pressure out of your, ear. out of your ear is higher because that your head has a certain pressure inside of your ears. So if you go up in the airplane, the airplane there's less pressure unless they have a really good pressure system in their in their uh, in their seating areas, which most of them do. But there's less air out there, so there's less air pushing on your ears. So you need to equilibrate them. You need to allow the pressure inside your head equal to one outside, so your head doesn't hurt. Um, balloons. Uh, would it be better to have a balloon filled with carbon dioxide or helium? Yeah. Why helium? Okay, that's cool, it floats, but what else? It's less dense in air. It's less dense in air, so that's why it's floating. Anything else? <laughs> okay, but mm, but which ones um which ones last longer? Carbon dioxide balloons or helium balloons? Mm -mm, helium balloons are gone like a day or two. Carbon dioxide balloon. You see this balloon I've had over here for a couple weeks. Uh, it's only it's filled up with carbon dioxide. It's slowly deflating, but it's been there for probably two three weeks now. Why? Why is that one staying, but healing will go be gone in two days? Uh, Why is healing able to escape? The particles are smaller. Particles are smaller, atomic radius, first of all. And what else? It has less, less, particles. less molar mass, okay? Small things move fast. Big things move slow. That's why I did not run to first base very often. I played softball. So, we have small things moving fast. Healing moves, moves really fast. It's able to escape through a tiny pinhole in the bottom of the balloon. You know, you tie it off. It escapes like that. Carbon dioxide is a big molecule. It weighs 44 grams per mole. Helium only weighs like 4 grams per mole. So, the bigger the particle, the slower they move. So, they don't escape very often. So, technically, I would love to have four gray balloons with carbon dioxide. Because I know that I'll be happier longer because I have to happen for three weeks versus two days. But they live on the floor, but it's okay. I'm not judging you. Okay. Okay, let me show you this. Um, we've got the cup where we're actually going to experiment with. So I'm going to have you guys do this in five minutes. Quickest demo. I was going to do the demo for you, but this is like half day activity. So I want you guys to do it. What you have to do, I love everything. Just, just keep bear with me. <laughs> You're going to experiment with the difference between, or the, the, how variables of pressure, volume, and temperature relate to one another with gases. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your Coke can, you're going to put just a little bit of water in the bottom. Okay, listen so that I can make sure we all know what you're doing. Put a little bit of water in the bottom, maybe like a milliliter. You're going to heat it up on the hot plate, and there's a couple people that have to share hot plates. It's plenty big for two cans. Once you see the vapors coming out, you need to take the, the, take the cup like this with beaker tongs, not your hands, beaker tongs, and you're going to flip it upside down in a beaker of a beaker of cold ice water. Okay? It has to be ice water. I have the ice in there already, so you're going to actually have to fill it up with water, not all the way, about three quarters of the way full of water. Okay? And you're going to tell me what happens and tell me why it happens. All those instructions are here. Get a hot plate soda can, add a small amount of water, prepare an ice bath. All right, get the ice out. Take beaker tongs, turn it upside down, mouth fully emerged. You have 10 lab stations. You first yourselves. I want you back here in six minutes. No doubt.
So pressure we talked about yesterday, it's pretty much just the effect that particles have on, that particles, gas particles have on their container. So a water bottle is one of the plastic gas, but it also helps apart by gas particles within and without. This balloon is held in the shape that it's held in, um, held in the shape that it's held in because of the gas particles outside and inside the balloon holding in that shape. So gas particles usually take the shape of their container, like we said, and they also collide with the container. Pressure units, uh, the most common is atmospheres, kilopascals, uh, millimeters mercury square. We don't use as often, but which one was it equal to? Or which was it the same as? Millimeters of mercury. Yeah, it's, it's also known as 760 Tor. Uh, this was a person's name, so obviously scientists name, name it after. Pascal was another guy. Um, volume has to be represented in in liters or milliliters. Most commonly it's in liters, but milliliters is also allowed. A lot of times we'll use liters. Temperature is a special one. You always have to report for gases for every single gas calculation. When we do our calculations in every single gas, temperature unit has to be in Kelvin. You have no choice. You must convert to Kelvin. How do you do that? Add 273. You don't have to do the 0.15 because that's real nitpicky. So like uh, at STP, 0 degrees C plus 273 gives us 273 Kelvins for our STP temperature. Lastly, that so that's about a uh, variable is temperature, which is T. The last one is moles, which we represent as, as N. Okay, so if you ever have to convert from grams to moles, you're calculating for N. These are important because these pressure unit, or sorry, these variables are used in formulas. The formulas are, ready? Boyle's Law. Oops, let's do Avogadro's first again. Avogadro's law relates to volume and moles. What do you think? Do you think that as I increase moles, I increase volume, or they're indirectly related? What do you think? If I increase moles of gas, do I increase volume? Okay, so they're directly related? Okay, so that's what we're, we're trying to figure out. And this is really logical. They're directly related. The way this formula works is I give you an amount of moles and an amount of volume. Attention all of Mr. Amount of volume. students, please go by his room before you leave school today. All of Mr. McNeil's students, go by his room before you leave school today. Thank you. Have so, a great weekend. As I increase moles, I should be increasing volume. So this is going to give you a setup so that you can actually calculate something from scenario one 
<coughs> and solve for an unknown I give you in, in, very, in scenario two. So I could give you information about moles and moles and volume, and I could ask you to solve for volume two. How would you do that? So N1 times V, or sorry, I heard N1 times V2 actually is equal to N2 times V1. That's cross multiplication and division. So dividing by what? The known, the N1, right? N1. Solves for V2. Cross multiplication, division, or lobby dog chop, whatever you guys do in those classes. Boyle's Law. Pressure. Okay, um, give me your box of air. Increase your pressure. What you do to your check or to your volume? Increase. All right, so directly or indirectly related. Increase pressure, decrease volume. I'm squishing it down. So increase pressure caused a what? Decrease. Decrease in volume. So is that directly or indirectly? Indirect. Indirect means that they are opposite. Oh. Okay. Directly means that as you increase volume, I'm sorry, as you increase your moles, you increase your volume. They're both the same. If they're opposites, then they're called indirectly related. How do we write this one? P1, V1 equals P2, V2. Guess who made this one up? Boyle, Mr. Boyle. He's the one who discovered this one. All right. Um, as I increase my temperature on a gas, they move faster, right? They move faster. Do they spread out or get closer together? They spread out. So what happens to their volume? It gets bigger. So guess what? Temperature causes a what on volume? An increase on volume. So directly or indirectly? Directly. Okay, so this equation looks really similar to this first one, but the V is on top this time. It's V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Okay, and I remember this because Mr. Charles went to Virginia Tech. VT. Virginia Tech. I made that one up. Virginia Tech. Oops, that's Tech. There you go. Um, this one, though, so I could actually ask you to solve for the volume of a balloon, if you know the volume of the balloon at this temperature, and I'm going to give you a new scenario with a different temperature. So I could give you all this information you could solve for V2. Okay? But these, though, you'll notice that, like, I didn't include any pressure or any moles in this, right? So what am I going to assume about pressure and moles? They're what? No, sorry, no, that's interesting. I'm going to assume that if I'm not telling you they're changing, we're going to assume that they're not changing, so we're going to assume constant. Okay, so all these, you assume pressure and moles are not changing. This one, who's not changing? Uh, not changing moles or temperature. Bye. You guys have what you have to do. You have a mole money, so you have to clean up.
I'll just write it on your board. <laughs> I'm leaving you a note on your board. I think I just left it. Yeah. Over there on the stack of boxes. This is the last day. Hold it fast. So many people. I'm so sorry. I was just going to take this very Yes. Oh, Mulani? Yeah, I'll put this here for you. Friend, my Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're good. I'm good. You're good. Take that, Gary. That's not that bad. Heather, I uh, uh, change in a minute. Okay. Is Molmoney on your desk? Is Molmoney due today? Put my name on it. Molmoney is due ASAP. Oh, okay. You can, you can digitally send me whatever you have, and I'll take it later. Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> All right, so you guys just give me a couple of Oh, I've changed this. Okay. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So note to self, I need to clarify one graph. ASAP! Send me text messages with what you have and I'll use it. Okay. I'll credit, I'll give credit it, I'll withdraw from your account. Whatever. I already added it to all the people who got it. I went online. I think I have. Oh, you it? How much did you get? I did the lowest test grade. Oh, really? That's so, I, so I have six. Because I had uh, seven. Just for a second. Just a text. Hi, Bryce. Bye. Hi. 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 I never heard of I don't I don't know. 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 I don't know.